If you're enjoying this introduction to Revit, make sure you check out the full beginner to advanced level course on my website, s15studio.com. We're now going to move on to the first step of every project, which is to set up your project standards. So we've already selected our architectural template. So this is our first step. What we then need to do is just to double check our units. And to do that, we will go to our manage tab at the top. We'll come down to the settings panel. And the last one there is our project units. So we'll click on that. The first thing we have is our discipline. So what discipline are we going to create this project for? We have common electrical energy, HVAC, infrastructure, piping, or structural. So for the purpose of this course, we're going to stick with the common. And here on the left-hand side, we have the various different units that we're going to be using throughout the project, our angle, area, distance, length, slope, time, volume. And all we need to do is just check the format of those to ensure that this is how we want them to be displayed in our project. So we take the angle for an example. It's showing here at 12.35 degrees so if we select that we can change that to gradients if wanted or radians or degrees minutes and seconds what i'll be doing is choosing degrees um, with that, we can choose how we want to round it to the decimal point. So how many places after the decimal do we want to display? Kind of various standards that we should already know if we're working in an office environment, all of these standards will be preset for us. This will either be controlled by your CAD manager or you will now have a BIM manager. So they would set out these formats already. So what you need to do is just double check that all of those formats are correct. They're in line with the company that you are in, or if you're self-employed working for yourself, this is where you then set those standards and just ensure that whatever you're trying to produce, whatever's being displayed and being sent to the client, to the site, all of those formats are correct and in line with what you're trying to display. So everything within here is correct. There's no need to change anything from what I can see from here. So I'm happy with that. So I'm going to press OK. Next, back in the settings panel, we have project information. And within the project information is where we add in the identity data for the project. And when we do, all of that information will then be displayed on our title blocks on our sheet. And also the information that we input into this can be tracked in the future if the project is then passed on to a different company client and so on. So there we can enter in our organization name. For me, I'm going to type in S15 Studio. Organization description. So who are you? You're an architect, engineer, construction company. I am an architect. Next is the building name. If there's a name for the building, we'll enter that here. And the author is the person who's creating this model. So I will just simply add in my initials, which is SF. Next is the IFC parameters. I'm not going to dive into this too much here because it's quite technical and it's too early on in the course to, to go into that information. Next, we have our root analysis. Again, at this stage, it's too technical, so we'll pass over that to the next. And final, which is other. So here we have just basic headings, so our project issue date. So when are we issuing that project? Our project status, so what point is the project? Is it pre-planning, planning, design, construction, tender? The client, this is where we'll enter in the client's name, the project's address, the project's name, and the project's number. So what we can do is I'll just type in 010123. Project status, we'll call it pre-planning. For the client name, we can just type in client new for now. For the project address, 
if we select it there is a small box with three dots if we click that here we'll type in the full address so we'll type in 123 street london obviously you will give the complete address in there but this is just purely for an example next we have the project name we will call it small house obviously i'm being very vague for this example but again you'll type in the correct name for your project and the project number this is our first project so 001 for our project so now we've checked our units we've added in the project information so for the next part we'll need to do the project location you can do this at any point in your project it doesn't have to be done at this point but if you have your site plan if you know your location you can do it at this point just to save you some time in the future and to ensure that everything is correctly located for your project the reason we want to correctly locate our project will become more apparent when we go to do our sun and solar studies we're able to show the correct shading for our building so it is quite important at that point but for now i'll just quickly go through to show you that so in our project location panel we'll select the first one and in here you will locate your property so i'm in london at the moment so where you are situated you'll do the same you'll just zoom in to where you're located and what i can do is i can pick up the house and move it to where my project is located so what this does is it will give me the correct geolocation for my project and the benefits of that will become more apparent further along the course next over is the sites tab so if there are shared sites with for this project you could then enter them into this point here but we just have one site so we'll leave everything as is and we'll press ok the following two are your coordinates so what we can do is we can actually import our coordinates from a site plan and we can then properly geolocate this project to that plan we can also export and share those coordinates but we don't have a site plan at this point so we'll skip over to the next point and below that we have relocate project and rotate to true north so as i said in the beginning when we start our view will always be pointing north but we know that every building does not point to north so what we can do is we can place our building into the correct geolocation and it will obviously be at an angle what we can do is we can change the true north to the project north so we can have the building rotate into a more usable position so all walls are at say zero or 90 degrees which will help us to model but we know that the building will always face true north so at any point in the project we can revert back to true north and the building will rotate back into the correct position and finally we're just going to create a starting view for our project so whenever we open up a new project the first view on our screen is the project information so what we'll do first is come down to the project browser and on the sheets heading we're going to right click and click on new sheet and here we have the option of including a title block but for this sheet i don't want a title block to be included so i'm going to choose none and press ok and the first thing i'll do is come back to the sheets heading right click and rename and we'll change our number to 000 and the name will be project information enter so now we have a blank screen in front of us and what we're going to do is we're going to add some text to the screen and we can also then save this sheet into our template so when we open up a new project we can have this template always within a project and all we do is we just change the information so we're going to add some text now to start our starting view so we'll go to the annotate tab at the top and we're going to go to our text panel select text and to start our text we just click 
and then we'll zoom in with the scroll wheel and we've begun our text. So what I'm going to do is turn the caps lock on and type project. Next is creator. Then I have date, company, and location. Next I'll press close. So there, just like within AutoCAD, when we place a text window, we have our window around our text. We just want to expand that out. And I'm then going to go back in to add in my text. I'm going to turn my caps lock off. And our project title is Small House. The creator is my name. The date. You will obviously write in the correct date for today. Company is my company S15 Studio and the location of your project. So the location of my project is London. I'm just choosing that for this example. And then we press outside of the text box and our text is placed. So when you're going to create your project information for your starting view, this is just the bare minimum for what you'll need. But what you'll find is you'll need to add some additional information as you progress in your career. So you'll add in certain headings to this and you'll develop this project sheet even further. But just to give you the basics and the understanding of how to create this and why it's important. So one final thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a company logo. And I have shared that with you. It's in your folders with the files to share in the class. So what we're going to do is we're going to open up that folder and in there we have company logo. This is just a image and I'll show you two ways that we can bring it in. First is a very simple click, drag and drop and click it into the drawing. And then click and drag it into position. And we'll just simply drag one of the corners to make it smaller and you can make it bigger. So we're just going to reduce the size down a little bit and pull it underneath the text. So that's one very basic and quick way to bring an image in. You can also go to the insert tab and import image. And you can also do it that way. So we'll choose company logo, press open, and it's the same. So it's, it's entirely up to you how you want to do this. I find it very quick and simple just to click, drag and drop, but that's up to yourself. So lastly, we're just gonna make it a bit more appealing. And we're gonna to go to the annotate tab and we're just gonna draw a simple box around it. So we'll go to annotate tab, detail line and in the contextual panel here we're going to go over to rectangle and draw a simple rectangle around it by so we're going to click in the top left hand corner move the cursor over the text and the logo and click again to place escape to finish so now we've entered in our project information and what we want to do is we want this view to be the first view whenever we open a project. So to do that, we'll go back to the Manage tab. We'll come to the Manage Project. So then on the right-hand side, we have Starting View. We'll click on Starting View. And then we're just being asked what would we like, which view would we like to be at the starting screen. So we'll come down to our Sheet 000 Project Information, select it, press OK, and that's now taken effect. So just to show you the starting view in action, we'll close that view, close down level zero, save the project. And then when we click on project one again, it will come straight to that starting view. So you can make this project information more appealing. You can add more text, your company's logo, other information that you think is essential to every project. And what you can also do is add in a notes section and in that notes section you can add text to explain what point you're in the project or what's required what's missing what stage so when another person opens your project they know exactly where you are what's been done what's not done and so on so this is a very important part 
for every project just to keep a good standard of practice for your projects. Okay, so we'll save that and we'll go to our level zero and we can now close down the project information page and we're back at level zero.